Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonmoon.com and today I wanna to share with you 10 ways to use your sourdough starter. So lately there's been a ton of new found interest in sourdough starter. I'm getting a lot more questions about it. I'm finding that a lot of people really want to get theirs going in their kitchen and some people have already have established them and are enjoying using them daily. And now I know a lot of you haven't been following me throughout my entire blogging journey and are not familiar with some of my sourdough recipes because they get old and buried on the blog and on the YouTube channel. And so I want to share with you 10 ways that I like to use my sourdough starter and some recipes. That way, if you're brand new to this whole sourdough world, you can go revisit those and start using your sourdough starter on a regular basis. So I would say that my number one way that I use sourdough starter in my kitchen is with sourdough pancakes. Now, what I love about this recipe is it's a no weight recipe. So as long as your sourdough starter is fed, so that means that you gave it some flour and water, let it sit out, get active for a little bit, and then either left it on your counter or put it back in the refrigerator, you can make these pancakes. Let's say that it is five o'clock or six o'clock or whenever you eat dinner and you realize that you have nothing planned and you have no meat thought out or no basis for any kind of a meal at all. It's been a while since you've gone to the grocery store, but in your fridge, you have maybe a dozen eggs and you have your sourdough starter. You can pull out your starter as long as you have two cups. That's why I like to keep mine in a large bowl and keep plenty on hand in case I have an emergency like this. You can make sourdough pancakes and eggs and you have a nice well-run dinner. Everybody in your family is gonna be super happy with it and you did not have to have a ton of ingredients to make that happen. Okay, another one I love for the exact same reason is the sourdough skillet. This is basically where you mix together in a cast iron skillet a whole bunch of different veggies, maybe some meats or a meat. There are so many different fries you can make with this. And then you make a sourdough mixture for the top and you put it on and you bake it. And then it's kind of like a bread layer on top. So this is a great one pot meal, it has everything all in one pot. There's bread, there is a meat and a veggie, and it's so delicious and it requires no pre-planning. So as long as you again have some sourdough starter that's fed and ready to go, you can create that. Okay, another one I love is of course sourdough bread. Now this one takes a lot of pre-planning and that's why it does not make it into the rotation very often here. We like it, uh, we like to use it, but a lot of times I'm so busy, I'm not doing a whole lot of planning, and so you'll find me using those no weight recipes quite a bit more, but still, whenever I have the time to make some freshly baked bread, this is my go-to. I even have a cinnamon raisin variety that's also really good for a breakfast treat or French toast, which leads me to my next one, and that is a French toast casserole or a bread pudding. So I have a recipe that is for either when you fail at making sourdough bread, which totally happens, and you just wanna cut it up into chunks and make it into a nice casserole, or even if you have a perfectly good loaf of bread, it's a great recipe for a morning breakfast. You could even make it ahead the night before, throw it in the oven, and then you have a lovely casserole, maybe for a Saturday or a Sunday morning brunch or breakfast. Okay, probably the recipe that gets the most fanfare is the English muffins, and for good reason. They are the most delicious. I have people tagging me all the time on Instagram with their English muffins. Now, what is so great about them is they are not a no weight recipe, but they only require you to think ahead from just the night before. So bread almost requires like a 48 hour wait period. The English muffins do not, and they're pretty much no fail too. They always work out. You can use them for breakfast. You can use them as bread for a sandwich. I like to put chicken salad on them, any kind of sandwich, they're so good for that. And there is nothing better than cutting one open that's really hot, slathering it with some grass-fed butter and honey or jam. Oh, it's just the best. So those are way up there at the top of one of my favorites. Another is sourdough tortillas. These, again, I don't end up making a ton because of the amount of work that goes with them, but if you really wanna recreate that Mexican type of burrito or enchiladas or something like that, but you don't really wanna use just white store-bought tortillas, 
on a special occasion, this is gonna be great for you. Or if you just don't mind spending a ton of time in the kitchen, it's a good recipe, but it definitely requires a little bit more work and effort than some of the others, which is why I don't make them a ton, but when I do, I'm like, why don't I make these more often? They're so good to have like a lunch wrap. So if you make a bunch ahead of time, you can have a very fast and easy lunch. Okay, another is my sourdough cinnamon rolls. Now this is something brand new, but we have been making them like crazy because they're so good. Now I'm really sorry to do this to you guys, but I'm not making a video for that here on YouTube. I put that in my friend Jill's Heritage Crash Course. Now I will tell you more about that at the end of this video, but basically there's a free watch period from March 11th through March 15th. So if you wanna get my recipe, there'll be a link in the description box for that to where you can get it for free during that free viewing period. These are so good. It took me a lot of experimenting to get them just right. I tinkered with that recipe probably five times. Now trust me, my kids were not complaining because every time they're still good, they just aren't exactly right. And by the end, I feel like we got it on point and it is so fluffy and delicious, whole and natural ingredients. So it's a breakfast you can feel good about, but yet your kids are definitely gonna thank you for it. Another one of my absolute favorites is the pizza crust. Now I have a little bit of an unconventional kind of pizza crust because it's only two ingredients. So basically it's sourdough starter, olive oil, then I like to add a little bit of salt, but you don't have to. And it is, ridiculously easy and it sounds like something that wouldn't work trust me whenever you watch the video uh, i'll link it in the below you're gonna think how could that work it totally works and it's really good now i did a little bit of a spin-off of that recipe by making a no weight flatbread but it's the same concept to where you basically flavor up some sourdough starter so you can pull it out of the fridge if you have nothing planned for dinner preheat a cast iron skillet or a pizza stone spread out the sourdough starter, add some olive oil, salt and pepper, bake it, and you have seriously a pizza crust that pulls right up. You can add cheese, toppings, whatever you want, and it is no weight and easy. So those no weight recipes always are gonna make it to the top of my list. Okay, now one that I still want to play around with this recipe a little bit more, and I actually did it as one of my very first blog posts about three years ago, so the photos are bad and I wanna revisit that, but that is some sourdough donuts. Now you can still check out the recipe. It was good when we made it. I need to tinker with it a little, little bit more, but so delicious. You can make that dough the night before, shape it into donuts and then fry it in a little bit of coconut oil and you have some donuts from your sourdough starter which is a great way to use it, and obviously your kids will love it. The last one I'm sharing is a sourdough apple pie. This again is a no weight recipe. This was something that I experimented back in the fall with whenever all the apples were ripe, and it turned out so delicious. It is basically some apples cooked up and then a sourdough topping. It's kind of like the sourdough skillet recipe, but a sweet version, and it is good for breakfast or dessert. If you pair it with a little bit of vanilla ice cream, it is the best. All right, so there are 10 ways that you can use your sourdough starter once you get it established. You can visit my original post, which I teach you how to make a sourdough starter here on the blog and my YouTube channel, and then I also have a sourdough Q&A because over the years since making that post, I've had tons of questions about it. Also, be sure to check out the link for my friend Jill over at the Prairie Homestead's Heritage Cooking Crash Course. It is going to be awesome. She's going into veggie fermentation, sourdough, how to bake bread, how to cure meats, canning, all of those homestead cooking techniques, she has been doing them on her farm for the last 10 years. Um, she's sharing in that course, she actually had it professionally filmed and I contributed my sourdough cinnamon roll recipe. Several other bloggers contributed recipes as well. It's gonna be so good and you can watch it for free from March 11th through March 15th. Now, if you are watching this video in the future, it's well past March 11th of 2019, you can still purchase the course. It'll always be available for sale. And she has it super reasonable. I was actually really surprised at the price. It's gonna be such a good resource for your kitchen or your homestead, especially if you're brand new and you really wanna start fermenting things and making some sourdough creations, but you're just nervous and you need someone to help you hold your hand. Perfect resource for that. I will leave a link in the description below. All right, well, if you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.